I walked out uh, back this morning, and for some reason, when I walked out back and I saw that incredible moon over the flags in the veterans area, I thought of a lady that uh, was about 25 years ago, about, and we had a board meeting, and we were about to approve a contract for somebody to buy the back four acres. And Ruby was in the beginning stages of dementia, and she was on the board, and she got up. We were meeting in Charter Hall. And she got up and had an absolute pizzy wizzy. She started to cry. She talked about the back 40, and we voted not to sell the back 40. And now we have what we have now. I've never forgotten Ruby for that. You know, I, uh, as I looked over the Veterans Memorial and saw the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, the American flag, the POW flag, I, and I, the moon was like you could just, it was carved out. You could just see the features, and I almost saw Ruby's face in there. And I realized when I went out there, not a lot of time had passed since I got up, but in a short period of time this morning, I checked on my granddaughter who spent the night. I let the dog out. I plugged in the coffee. I started my car. I drove here. I put my key in the front door of the church, and it opened. And I realized it's so easy to take all those little things for granted, to just assume you can do that every single day. You know, the freedom just to be yourself, the freedom to do the routine things that we don't think about, that's an awesome, awesome freedom. And those of you that uh, served under those flags, wow, we owe a lot to you. And yesterday our youth group came here and spent the afternoon and evening at the church. They just hung out. Burgers on the grill, a little frisbee, some softball, marshmallows. We shared communion around the campfire. At the end of the evening, we came in here, and all the kids gave us names of people they wanted to pray for. And I was thinking, when I was a kid, I wanted so much to grow up in a church that had a gym. I thought it'd be fun to just go to your church on an ordinary day and ask the minister if it was okay to shoot some hoops. And now we got that. And so yesterday evening, uh, one of the sixth graders comes up and says, hey, Pastor Don, you want to play a little one-on-one? -on -one? And I said, yeah. I said, that was all my dream. And my son, Quentin, has an electric scoreboard, and he said, Quentin, I tell you what, I'm going to play your dad best of three five-minute games. And so Q puts the scoreboard on the kitchen counter, and the time goes down, and him and me, and speed versus finesse. <laughs> and the... the, the, the Kids this tall, he beat me two out of three. <laughs> he beat me two out of three. And I was thinking of the freedom to play, the freedom to dream, the freedom to win, the freedom to lose, the freedom to hang out in a gymnasium at your own church. Yeah, I looked at those flags, and I looked at the moon, and I saw the deer nibbling at the grass, and thinking how there was a day when I used to be Tyler, there was a day when I could run and shoot with the best of them. Of course, I could never picture my pastor in gym clothes back then. <laughs> but things have changed. You know, how we handle life's changes is kind of a daily challenge for all of us. Whether you're young or old, with the passage of time, things change. And I think of those words in the gospel today where Jesus says, you know, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you really believe that I abide in you and you abide in me, then your job is to bear fruit, make the world a better place. And I've been thinking a lot lately about bearing fruit and the passage of time. And for each one of us, change is different. You know, we age. You're in junior high and then one day you're in college. You go from working every day to being retired or maybe even being laid off. Maybe you go from being healthy to all of a sudden now you're battling something like cancer or even Alzheimer's. You can go from being the best player on the team to riding the bench and not playing at all. And then later in life, you might have some sixth grade remind you that life is not about winning and losing anymore. It's about the joy of just being able to play, just being able to do your best. And you know, the church is different too. It has to be. I remember uh, 
one Sunday morning, it wasn't that long ago, I'm sitting in the front row here with Peggy, and I look over the church, and I'm like, the, the place is empty. I mean, attendance is, supposed to, attendance is supposed to be big this time of the year. And I said, Peggy, what? the church is so empty. What am I doing wrong? How come? And she said, well, Don, oftentimes you say religion is not about going to church, and people are finally listening to you, you know? <laughs> I said, thanks a lot. <laughs> but I realized more and more. I'm glad we have the church, the building. You know, that's where I go to work. It's how I feed my family. It's a good place for most of you. But I realize more and more the church really is you and me. If we truly believe that we abide in God and God abides in us, then the church really takes shape when you walk out the door and get in your car and go home. Because the church comes alive in the way that you live, in the way that you work, in the way you talk and treat people. You know, the only way to help people believe in God is to somehow, in our fragile humanity, help people see God's Spirit living in us in the way we treat them. And the only way we can really teach Jesus is to walk in Jesus' sandals so that when people watch us walk and watch us work, somehow in our weaknesses, they still see Jesus walk too. And so I looked at the moon, and I looked at the flags, and I'm thinking about what is a, a hope. Remember a few days ago? I, I was kind of touched by the whole thing. The leader of North Korea and the leader of South Korea come together. And they're at that line of demarcation. And they step over here, and they shake hands. And they step over here, and they shake hands. And then they hug each other. And I don't know what's going to happen, and either do you. But I wasn't just happy for those two leaders. I was kind of being happy for all those families who live in North Korea, hoping that those kids that grow up there, that they can have the same freedom to throw the Frisbee and to dream and to beat their priest in basketball. And then as I saw the moon and the flag, I thought about Scott. Went down to the Red Robin Friday night with the kids and a couple of the grandkids, and uh, our server comes up to us, and he's a, hip-hop kind of guy. You know, he got beads in his hair, and he just is so chipper. He treats our kids like gold, and he's interested, and he's fun. And then he tells us a little bit about himself and about his dreams, how he has grown up in Harvey, and he still lives in Harvey. And he says, Harvey's not an easy place to be from and to still live in, but he's determined to make it. And he thanks us for the big tip, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. And I think of the moon, and I think of the flag. You know, things are different today. They are, and they probably need to be. The church is different, and you're different, and so am I. But what is not different is the message, the freedom of the flag waving, the vine who gives us life, our calling to be the branches and to somehow bear fruit in the way we live our lives every day. So between last Sunday and this Sunday, what did you see in your world? Where were you and what kind of people did you meet? Maybe a kid playing frisbee, a sixth grader outclassing a minister, a server making his way through life. And actually when I saw that, I saw more than that. Somehow in the middle of all that was a higher power at work in the world. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed. It's on page 105.